Hi y'all, welcome back to my channel. I'm Nalanda and today I'm recreating some of I Use Outfits from the music video for it blooming. Now that song really, that song got me in a chokehold, okay? It was 2020, I was falling in love with BTS and 8 by IU and Suga had just released and I fell in love with IU. Honestly, this music video is what convinced me to dye my hair blue in 2020. So today I'm recreating three looks from the music video with my very special guest. Ta-da! This is Hi. Miss Camilla, Miss Shut Up Camilla. Her channel will be linked down below. She, she's one of my best friends, but has been my best friend for over 10 years. We've oh, gone to time. a million concerts yeah. together. Yes, Camilla used to be um, crowd surfing her way through the <laughs> crowd, and I used to be just mosh pitting my way to the front. Yeah, <laughs> facts. She's very talented in, in makeup, and so she's me going too. to help me do the makeup for these looks. In our video together on Camilla's channel, we watched some K-pop music videos. And we just reacted to that. Or mm -hmm. I reacted, well, reacted to them. I've already seen them. <laughs> I had no idea what to expect, and I don't listen to K-pop music, and I feel like I put myself always in this like K-pop bubble of being like, oh, I don't really like K-pop not thinking that K-pop is really just like pop music in another language. Hmm. And I have a newfound appreciation. Yeah, that's my girl. Mama, Mama Do? Mama Moo. Mama Moo. <laughs> that's the second time I've done it. Mama Moo. Mama yeah. Moo. No, Mama my girl. So, you know, I'm trying I, to convert her. <laughs> it worked. It worked. I really do. And I just watched the music video for this song, Blooming. <laughs> one of the things, though, I noticed is that the makeup is actually pretty simple. So mm -hmm. that's one of the things that's going to help slash work in our benefit mm -hmm. is the fact that it is simpler than some makeup styles that you might see over here. Over here, yeah. I might be like, hold on, I might struggle a little bit. I might have to do a little more research. The skin is very fair. It's mm -hmm. very, um, like, porcelain. Like, there's... It, there's not heavy contouring, heavy yeah. bronzing. Yeah. If anything, there's no bronzing, yeah. to be honest. It literally just looks like a flat slate. Mm -hmm. And it looks like there's like next to no blush. There's very mm -hmm. little blush. And if there is, it's a very light, light, light wash of a light pink. Right, I feel like for... I mean, obviously there's some K-pop concepts that have heavier makeup. But generally speaking, overall, it's usually very like you know, very natural looking mm -hmm. and kind of very like light. Sometimes it might be like glitter and stuff. One of the things that I noticed is that the eyeshadow also somewhat remains the same. It's mm -hmm. this pink shimmery mm -hmm. all over the lid, a little bit of maybe like a warm orangey pink in the crease. And then the lip shades are really what sh changes between the three looks that she has. Mm -hmm. um, they go from like a lighter pink to a little bit of a medium pink to like a darker pink. But we're all within the pink realm. Right, so it's right. all it's all right, right. the same, pretty much. Oh, yeah, and then I also shopped my roommate's closet to help me um, come up know. with these looks, too. So again, I'm taking inspiration from these three looks. I kind of shopped my closet and my roommate's closet to put together things that kind of fit the vibe. And I'm happy to show them to you. I actually haven't seen them yet, so this is going to be a surprise for me, too. <laughs> I'm going to be like, I'm going to be just as shocked as you guys are. Okay. I'll maybe live react to it in the back. <laughs> It's my, my hype woman. <laughs> ah, I'll forever be your hype woman for oh, life. Thank you, girl. All right. So Let's we get, get to it. Started. We're starting off with the um, First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Face Moisturizer. It's super, super lightweight, and we both have sensitive skins. Eczema for life. Uh, Hopefully not. I wish it wasn't for life, though. <laughs> I know. I know. Look at these cute little pink oh, cute. cookies. And then we'll just take your little thingies and tuck oh. them away. And we're going to take the other side and tuck them away. Ta-da! Look at how cute! Okay. So we're going to use the facial moisturizer because mm -hmm. one, it's really good on sensitive skin. Mm -hmm. I use this on my sensitive ES skin. Oh yeah, I love First Aid Beauty. Uh, it's just so moisturizing. And it was like the one facial moisturizer. I get eczema patches in between my brows and like in between mm -hmm. and it was like the one moisturizer where it had no fragrance where mm -hmm. it didn't like affect my skin so i'm gonna go in with the foundation now so now my question for you do you want me to go a little bit lighter kind of like that or do you want me to go true to your skin tone um let's go a little lighter actually because you know i think the thing too you know different beauty standard there they definitely yes. like that light bright skin they do i am gonna go just a tiny bit lighter so this shade is just a little bit lighter oh, yeah. but it's not like it's not gonna wash you out Right, right. I don't want it to wash you out. That's gonna be a little too crazy looking. Honestly, if it was like winter and I and I didn't have like the redness of eczema, I probably wouldn't. You like this, this color. would be accurate. Yeah. <laughs> Because of my like uh, my eczema problems where it's like been in my hairline, I feel like um, oh, the, through like okay. the scratching and like just like the shit that's been happening in mm -hmm. it, like it's messed up my hair too. 
So can we talk about how you found out about her? Um, yeah, so basically, obviously it was like 2020 and I had just really gotten, I had just fallen into the BTS like rabbit hole and I was like really into it. And, and I was living out um, at home in Connecticut in my one bedroom apartment by myself, like also pretty much out of work too because I worked in restaurants at the mm -hmm. time and they were shut down. Yeah. Um, and then in, I think it was May of 2020 that this song had released, or I don't know, it might have been March, I don't know, but it was in the first half of 2020 that there was a song called Eight that one of the members of BTS featured in that was IU's song. Mm -hmm. And basically it's called Eight because um, this was the year they turned to like 28. Because oh, they were both born in 93, which fun fact, me and Camilla are both born in 93 as well. So this is our 30 year, so. Oh. Well, yeah, yours at the end of the year. I'm already 30, girl, but. I'm getting there. But yeah, so then I like really liked her. I loved like the sound of her voice. Like, she was so beautiful. And then I really had to like deep dive into her a little more to, to figure out like who is she. I wanted to listen to more songs by her and mm -hmm. stuff. But yeah. When the song came out between the two of them, mm -hmm. did you like, did it show up as like a recommended or just because you follow BTS, like you saw that he mm -hmm. had released mm -hmm. that? No, just because it was like BTS related. Right? Like, yeah. Is that what they yeah. call it? Yeah, ARMY's good. Army. I mean, I feel like you know, everyone's a stan thing. If you're like a Nicki Minaj stan, you're like a barb or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the, the Taylor Swift fans are Swifties or whatever. Swifties. Like BTS just has ARMY. Like mm -hmm. ARMY really is an army for BTS basically. They're still doing the like, military stuff right now, right? Yeah, one of the members like actually just left. Like they're like a couple days ago. Like left as in finished or is no doing le it? left as in to enter. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and then one member is another member is doing his tour, and that's where I'm going next week. Okay. For how long is this process? So I think each member it'll probably be a minimum of 18 months, but it could be a maximum of like 22 ish. It depends on like I think what like sec they go into and stuff you know I, I don't feel the most comfortable talking about it because I'm not like familiar with like the thing yeah. granted I'm not familiar with how the military works here you know what I mean like I don't know Same. after like basic training and then they go to other training and then I don't you know You're what I mean like I don't like, know I you know, right like I don't really know here either because you know I'm not in it so mm -hmm. The fan, the fan base is just so strong. Yeah, and that, I, yeah. I think the thing too, a big misconception too, was like because I think basically when they had talked about going on a quote unquote break, it was um, translated as like the word hiatus, which is like you know the big the big scary H word. Back, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then people think about it, it's like more like the um like you know because they think about One Direction all the time. It's like oh, boy groups that do this, blah blah. They're all gonna break up this stuff, blah blah, whatever. But it's like I I have always seen it more like Fall Out Boy's hiatus where they went mm -hmm. on an, an indefinite hiatus in 2009 until like 2013. I forgot about that. Oh yeah, no, that was like that was a moment because. I think their hiatus, it was more like a time for them to do their own thing because they all did their solo work. Like, yeah. uh, Patrick went solo, did his own thing. I saw him in concert. Like, Andy. Did you and, really? I did. He was, a, he was at Lupo's play back in the day. I went by my, I literally went by myself. I didn't but anyway, know that. but like, um, Andy and Joe, they were in a group together too. They were in, um, I can't think of what, I can't think of the name of it. What did Pete do? Pete was in a group, he was in, he was in a group called Black Cards with BB Rexa. That was, that was a BB Rexa was in Black Cards with Pete Wentz before she was like BB Rexa. Had no idea. Yeah, no, girl. I saw them in concert too. I club hell. I club hell in Providence, Rhode Island. Girl. Oh well, rip. Yeah, so rip to club you know. Hell. But anyway, but I feel like again, their break was a good time for them to like do their own thing and kind of like you know just grow a little more. And then mm -hmm. when they came back, it's like come back stronger. And that's the idea of like what BTS is doing. Obviously, in addition to the fact that they have like the military enlistment right you know, requirement. Mm -hmm. But I will say, I do think that BTS is a lot more like they they definitely show off more as like family of brothers versus I think some other groups have. I think the thing too that like, with, with BTS is that even if they all have different tastes and stuff, obviously there's some of the people are like rappers, some people are singers, and I think their interest in music is different. I do think that at the end of the day, they are, they definitely value the group a lot more. Yeah. I think that they, they always talk about how like they want to come back as a group. They, they can't wait for that day and they talk about the group ahead of themselves where I feel like maybe other groups, whether it be the One Direction, the Backstreet Boys, the Insyncs of the whatever, mm -hmm. they maybe didn't always put the group ahead of the individual. I think I agree with that. This so is literally the most amount of blush I think I can put on yeah. you without with being like true to it. It's yeah. the fit me in 102 light rose. Yeah, it's very like light. It's very very light. I, I just don't see any of the members of BTS being quote unquote like left in the dust. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I I don't see that happening, especially when again we talked about like fandom stuff and how like um, a lot of fans of like K-pop groups in general are very very dedicated and like mm -hmm. obviously BTS as like the biggest group they have like the most dedicated fans where it's like I kind of find it impossible. I I do not see people not supporting or being really interested in any members work like you know what personal, I mean? yeah. yeah like i don't see that happening where i feel like unfortunately it is kind of a bummer that like the chris kirkpatrick's of the world like didn't i don't know if they had the same like you know 
dedication love right right um or like the you know the, the other the people who are not beyonce's or you know what i mean the Mich the michelle's of every destiny child i don't know if they had like the same dedicated fandom because if they did their solo careers probably would have been more successful one of the things that i do have to say is that um i well more of a question do you think that even remotely one member of bts is maybe not as beloved as the rest of them or are they all equally as like loved i think in my, honestly in my opinion like i do think that i remember is very very well loved like i don't mm -hmm. i like so i in my opinion i really don't think there's anyone who is like a little less more beloved yeah or who's like the most beloved or who's not i mm -hmm. think i do think that there might be some people like some members might get more love more love on the surface from like people who are like oh he's hot versus like versus like genuine love maybe like for example if you see a, a sexy picture of this member people might be like oh he's really like that's that's my man he's hot whatever but it's like do you know anything about him do you like care about, you know what i mean so Probably i don't i don't not. consider that like more love you yeah know what I, mean? I can feel that i actually am gonna use this shade right into your yeah, crease because yeah. i feel like this is like the perfect shade you yeah, know honestly i really like those light pink like those light pink peach tones a lot i also brought my jaclyn hill palette um but oh yeah they I doesn't feel like there's no shade like that center one that i think would go mm -hmm. i think i have the shimmers down yeah, that she yeah. uses but i don't have that shade mm -hmm. that all over shade that you have well, i think we'll see i'll hide behind you so it doesn't like oh my so. gosh look at how good that came out i fell in love with it first during like 2015 miss king kylie jenner when she did her peach like phase and her blue hair and stuff that i like tried it and i was like oh i really like the peach like the mm -hmm. orangey peach colors and then i think and it also is very popular in like k-poppy stuff i noticed yeah there was a lot actually so in the videos um that i was like reacting to one of the things that i noticed is that if they're wearing eyeshadow most of them are this like pinky shade and if they're wearing eyeliner it's not a wing it's literally a flip yeah yeah like there's no there's no pointy yeah arrow yeah. wing yeah like it's literally just a line and like that's all it is right they're and not trying like, to fly away um this like top shade right here that ooh, that's pretty yeah so i'm going to use a mixture of that one as well as from the jaclyn hill palette i'm going to use this shade right here they're very similar they just have different undertones and yeah, hues yeah. um and this one looks like this one warmer. looks a little more warmer. It's gold. There's gold reflex mm -hmm. in it. The other one's not as... It's more of a shimmer versus this looks more like glitter on it. Mm. Um, so I think they're both going to be very pretty. They both like follow that same look. And what they do with this, I've noticed, is that... Oh, sorry. Did I scare you? Yeah. <laughs> sorry. I wasn't expecting it. Um, what I've noticed is that they actually also use this shade underneath their lids mm -hmm. too. So like right under the, the eyes. I like didn't think that I would love it as much as I do, but they're so pretty. Yeah, honestly, at this point in my life too, it's like I do very basic makeup, and then like I'll do, I'll basically do like the pinkish, the pinkish, orangey, reddish eye type stuff too with the blush. And so my my lip, my eyes, and my blush will be the same color at this point. And it's, that's just my look. Wait, this looks so nice. I'm so happy with it. Okay, let's also do it under your eyes. So that smaller brush is going to be the one that I use for under the eyes. <sighs> Now I know why the, the yeah, beauty bloggers. That's why really they gotta put it in front of their face because the, the camera will like focus on your eyes. So if I was stood back here and you try to go in the front, it might like just look at me. You know what I mean? Wow. Like, let's see. So cool. Girl, I'm not, not a content creator learning about cameras, right? <laughs> look up. Would have never thought that I would be like a food blogger. Yeah, no, because how did that happen? Because I feel like. When you were getting into content creation, you were a makeup. You were you were into makeup, and that's how and that's why she's my makeup girl because she was I into was. it. And then the problem with the makeup thing though is the fact that you have to come up with new makeup looks consistently, mm -hmm. which is a pain in the butt. Like I am not a pre-production, post-production kind of gal. Yeah. I when I get the motivation to do something, like I need to do it now. Otherwise, like it's, it's going gone. under the radar. It's gone. It's gone. We're not doing it again. So I was doing food stuff on my Instagram and then next thing I knew I was doing it on YouTube and I started it really during COVID because COVID was the time where like I I mean there was nothing to do mm -hmm. and restaurants really needed help they mm -hmm. needed the support people weren't realizing that like yeah you could cook at home but like grab takeout from these restaurants mm -hmm. like support your local restaurants so ultimately I ended up trying it out and one thing after the next, I kept on doing it, and then it turned into what it is now, which is 
still just food reviews. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna do your lips next. Okay. So they don't have. She doesn't have like a very harsh l- liner. Like that's yeah. not how yeah. it is. It's almost like a little. It's it's like a wash, but it's a little pigmented. Where it gets to be very dark and like defined is the look three. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna do this first look with a light wash of Urban Decay's Sheer Lady Flower. Like I've never. I've actually never used this lipstick before. I have a plethora of lipsticks. This actually is a very good match right now. It's been a while since I've done her makeup. Yeah, I can't go anywhere. It's <laughs> like jokes on you because I haven't done shit. Yeah. I'm gonna add a little touch of. Um, it's the Lorac Seductress. There it is. It's a really pretty like pink color, and I'm just gonna go over that a little bit because what that first one was is it's a little sheer which works for the first look, but I want to add just a little more color to it. Hmm. That's so pretty. Hmm, you, you do a good job. Okay, let us see it, let me see. What do we think? What do you like, do you want to change anything? Let's put on your, your mascara. Yeah, and but I, then I, I think, think that might be. I think that might be it. Yeah, I think it looks really good. Okay, let's do mascara. Okay. What a time. What a time to be a emo kid of the late 2000s, 2010, early 2010s or whatever. Okay, well that's So I think that was the that's the end of look one. All right. Okay. But you have to put on your clothes now. Let me now. put on my fit and then, well, I'll do a little runway walk. Right okay, now. I'm ready. <laughs> and this is look number one for IU. Well, how do you think I did? I feel like I have a big messy bun up. I think if it was a little tighter, it'd be higher. But you know, <laughs> messy bun. I have my red sweater. Granted, it's not Boston College sweater, but I am repping Providence. And I have my like long socks, which you can see when she goes outside in the snow. And I have some super short shorts on, which I assume she has in the video. In the video, her sweater is like way bigger, so it covers her legs. <laughs> but you know. So yeah, so this is my first look for the IU Bloom music video. So cute. I'm obsessed. <laughs> it's such a cute look. Thank you. Thank you from the peanut crowd. <laughs> <laughs> number two. This is so cute, Nils. Thank you. This is look number two. I have a big jean jacket over a nice black dress. I will say I didn't have any fishnets, but black stockings black. and the boots. And a nice little newsboy cap. Is that what you call it? Yeah. So cute. I like, I like the black dress with the jean jacket and tone it down with the boots. Ooh, I like these. Can we do a side view of them? Yeah. Look at how nice they are. Yeah, but yeah, this is my second IU look. I feel like, you know, it fits the vibe. Maybe it's not exact, but you know, fits. It's the vibe. Yeah. Cute. On to look number three. Ready. And this is look number three. This is like my personal favorite now. <laughs> but yeah, so basically I have like a big white collar here with big uh, black flop sleeves and I just wore like a, um, a black skirt with it. I think it's a dress but I'm not really sure but again this is me just picking uh, things out of my closet and my closet so this is what kind of worked. Um, this is actually just a blouse with a big um, white collar in the front which I love and then my roommate had this cute little like top here that has big puff sleeves and although I don't have a nice white boa I figured having my white sleeves come out kind of gives that vibe you know mm-hmm. And conveniently, I had this really awesome silver necklace that worked as like her little headpiece. So, what do y'all think, right? It's so cute! <laughs> so, I love this. But I love, I really do love a lot of K-pop um, like styling and stuff. Usually, I think that a lot of the fashion choices are usually unique and different, and I, I definitely find a lot of inspiration in it. And sometimes it's just so like royal looking and beautiful and stuff too. It just, it all depends. And I think that there's something out there for everyone's look and style and like, you know, their interests. And I think that I personally really like looking at music videos and performances to help inspire me of what I could create out of my own closet. So even something like this. Well, thank you so very much for watching. If you like videos like this, please be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.